Yo, good morning. Welcome to the gathering. It's good to see you in the gathering. It's good and cool in here, or reasonably cool. So uh, good to see you in this room. So would you stand with us as you're able this morning? It's a joy to be in worship together uh, this morning in this place. Um, originally, we were looking at actually meeting in Innsminger Hall because it was so hot in here uh, this week. We had a spike in temperature, and the AC was just completely out. And uh, I think it was like 84, 85 degrees on here, in here on, on Friday, and I thought, there's no way we can have church in here. Uh, but Webb came and reset the system and worked some magic, and, and luckily when I came in this morning, it was 70 degrees, and I thought, okay, that's a lot better than 84. So it's good to be here in this place together uh, this morning. I want to draw your attention to a few announcements that we have um, today. I hope that on your way in, you were able to pick up a communion packet. We're going to have communion later on in our service. Um, so be sure if you didn't already, there's one just um, back at the table, back outside in the lobby. Pick one of those up. Uh, we'd like to invite you to help the McMinn County Education Foundation to stuff the bus with school supplies. We have locations outside uh, both of the doors uh, by the office and over here by the gathering um, for you to, to give your donations for um, children in our school system to have school supplies for this coming year of school. So I'd love for you to participate in that. Um, the Adult Fellowship will resume on August the 9th at 6 o'clock in Innsminger Hall. Ronnie and Sherry Vinson are going to be hosting that, and everyone's welcome to come and, and share in that. Um, this Wednesday, we are continuing our study on the different Christian denominations. We're going to be looking at the Jehovah's Witness, so love for you to come and join us at 7 o'clock in Zimmer Hall or on Zoom this Wednesday. Uh, we are going to have a time this afternoon 
at the uh, Mayfields Lake House to have a lake day and a time together starting at 2 o'clock. We'd love for you to come and, and share in that with us. Also, we are going to be hosting a, a meal for the football team on August the 20th, and there's three different ways that you can help out. You can see on the tear-off portion of your bulletin how you can sign up. You can give financially, you can give of your service, or you can make some chicken casserole. I know that football team is going to eat uh, quite a bit of chicken, chicken casserole, so the more help we can get, the better. Um, so be sure to, to fill that out if you'd like to help out with that. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, this morning we explore and learn about the river in Revelation. We hear about John's vision of a crystal river flowing from God's throne, comforting light, peace, and hope for all God's people. Darkness is vanquished. Open our eyes and our hearts to catch a glimpse of this vision. Help us to place our trust in you that we may faithfully serve you knowing what awaits our eyes in glory. Amen. Would you stand with us as you're able? There is a fountain that never runs dry forever flows with the water of life you never stop moving you never stop moving and where your river runs everything lives and where your river goes will never thirst again you never stop moving you never stop moving. Your mercy flows like a wild, wild river. Your love is strong like a raging sea. God, all your goodness goes beyond all measure. Your praise like a flood pouring out of me. You call me out to walk with you on the sea. Even in my doubt, deep calls to deep. You never stop moving, you never stop moving. Your mercy flows like a wild, wild river. Your love is strong like the raging sea. God, all your goodness goes beyond all measure. Your praise like a flood pouring out of me. Your grace a limitless ocean. I'm swept away in the tide. We draw from the well of your goodness and drink from the water of life. Your grace a limitless ocean. I'm swept away in the tide. We draw from the well of your goodness and drink from your water. Your mercy flows like a wild, wild river. Your love is strong like the raging sea. God, all your goodness goes beyond all measure. Your praise like a flood pouring out of me. We've now come to our prayer time this morning. It was a joy this past Sunday to 
have a trip down the Hawassi River. Um, we had a number of folks from the church come and sharing that time together. That was a, a really a, a joy to, to have that time outside on the river uh, together. I um, know that there are a number of folks on our prayer list that we want to lift up. We certainly want to remember Karen Tyndall and her family after the loss of her father. I know y'all celebrated his life uh, this past week, and our prayers are, are with you during this time. Uh, we certainly want to also remember the, the family of Dan Kelly, a former minister of, of our church here at Keith. Um, they celebrated his life at Fountain City United Methodist Church on Wednesday of this past week. And so we want to lift up his family during this time. Also want to lift up the family of Bailey Witt. I know a number of folks in this community um, know him. It's a hard hit for a lot of friends and family uh, of his. And so a lot of people f- affected by that. So we want to lift up um, all of them. Uh, also, just being aware of the increase in COVID cases that we've uh, seen here recently. And we just want to invite you to just worship the best way you feel comfortable, whether that's wearing a mask or worshiping from home, or, or if you feel comfortable to be here in person uh, to worship this way as well. But I uh, just want to be aware of that. Um, are there other joys or concerns that we can lift up and share with one another this morning? Yes. Oh, today Holden is five. Happy birthday, Holden. All right, five years old. Yeah. New grandson. All right. Wade Allen. All right. Congratulations to Terry and Bev on their new grandchild, Wade. Absolutely, that's a celebration. Yes. Also Sarah Thomas's birthday today. So absolutely, yeah. So happy birthday to Sarah. A lot of birthdays going on. Yes. Okay. Celebration of life. Ingleside at 2 o'clock. Celebration for uh, Bailey Witt's life. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, Terry. John Mullinax, a longtime former football coach. Um, in this community, passed away. We we'll remember his family. Whitney Collier. Linker family and the Collier family, absolutely. Both of them have lost loved ones. It's a, it's a joy for, for me. Uh, this week I'm going up to Camp Lookout to serve as the minister in residence for Celebration Camp, which is a week especially uh, designed for adults with special needs. It'll be my seventh year. Uh, kind of being the chaplain for that group, and so I'm really excited to be up there with, with Reagan and Connor and, uh, and uh, Winter and all the staff at, at Camp Lookout this week uh, uh, doing that. So that's a joy. And Allie's coming up with me, so I'm excited to have her up there. <laughs> so I know she's excited about, you know, <laughs> Allie's, Allie's a camper. You know, she's a happy camper, but, uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun and looking forward to that. Um, do any of us have unspoken requests which we would acknowledge by the lifting of our hands this morning? As always, uh, you can let us know how you would like for us to lift you up in prayer. You can email us at prayer at keithumc.org. We're happy to know how we can join alongside you in that. At this time, let us now go to the Lord in prayer. Creator God, at the very beginning of creation, water was a symbol of refreshment of washing away, of renewal. Through the waters of creation, you brought forth life. In Genesis, a river flowed through the Garden of Eden. and In Revelation, a river flows through the new Jerusalem. We gather together this day to reflect on the importance of this gift of living water in our own lives. The river of life is a symbol of our own lives. So may we live as vibrant, as colorful, and as energetic as a river, moving and working and making a difference in the lives of others. And Lord, we know that there are many 
who are struggling during this time, many who are experiencing pain and grief over the loss of a loved one, many who are dealing with various illnesses and diseases and medical issues, many who are suffering with anxiety, addiction, depression. But Lord, we know that you are there to guide us on our journey. Transform us by your Spirit so that we can use our gifts to share about your love with others. May you guide us on our journeys as we glide down the river of life. And may we strive to branch out and make a difference in this community. May we bear good fruit as we water the soil around us, bringing forth hope, peace, and redemption. And may we experience your love and grace in our lives this day. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. We have a basket in the back and and baskets up here in the front. You're invited to come and bring your offering. And when you do, you can also light a candle for someone or kneel in prayer. So let us continue our worship this morning. Darkness runs for cover. When you move, no one's turned away. Cause where you are, fear turns into praise. And where you are, no hearts left unchanged. So come, move, let justice roll on like a river. Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. When you move, the outcast finds a family. When you move, the orphan finds a home. Lord, here we are. Oh, teach us to love mercy With humble hearts We bow down at your throne So come, move Let justice roll on like a river Let worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. King of all generations, let every tongue and nation surrender all to you. 
King of all generations Let every tongue and nation Surrender all to you alone So come, move Let justice roll on like a river let worship turn into revival Lord lead us back to you So come, move Let justice roll on like a river Let worship turn into revival Lord lead back to you so come move let justice roll out like a river let worship turn into revival Lord lead us back to you This morning we are wrapping up our sermon series, Splash. Eight weeks ago we started this series in Genesis, the first book in the Bible, by looking at the story of Noah's Ark. We looked at uh, Moses and the Red Sea, the story of Naaman, Jonah and the whale. We talked about rain on the just and the unjust. We talked about the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus turning water into wine, and Paul's shipwreck on the island of Malta. And each week I think we have seen how God moves and works and brings about deliverance through water for God's people. And this morning we are concluding this series in Revelation, the last book of the Bible, as we explore the river of life. The scripture lesson this morning comes from Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, shining like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree's leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on, our, on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will shine on them. And they will rule forever and always. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. At the end of the book of Revelation, the author John receives a vision of this new heaven and this new earth. And an angel essentially gives him a tour of heaven. And John describes it as a, a city, a holy city that's called the New Jerusalem. It's actually an old promise that comes all the way back from Isaiah when God said that God would create new heavens and a new earth which would abide forever. And so now this promise from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah is now finally realized in the book of Revelation. And in this passage, we can see what things will be like in this new heaven and new earth. It's described as a, a city of light, shimmering like a precious gem. There's this majestic wall with 12 gates and angels standing at each of them. And they all have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel inscribed on them. We're told that the city has this wall that's made of all these, these different, different gems like jasper and sapphire and emerald topaz. Streets are made with pure gold and translucent glass. The gates are made of pearl. And we get the sense that this is a very special, a very holy place. But perhaps the best detail about this whole description of this new heaven and new earth is that there's no mention of death, devastation, or destruction. There's no pain, no grief, no mourning, no judgment, no fear, no condemnation. 
In fact, we're told in the book of Revelation that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no more mourning, crying, or pain. And the former things have passed away. Everything is created new. Everything is made new. And we're even told that in this new order, the sea will be no more. There'll be no sea, which I think is kind of a strange detail. There's going to be no more ocean. But this is actually a good thing because for the the Jewish people, they regarded the sea in a very negative light. Throughout the Bible, uh, the sea is a symbol of separation. It keeps us away from other people, other parts of the world. The sea separates us. It's um, a symbol of turbulence. It's a a symbol of restlessness. And I think that we've seen that throughout this series, this splash series. Uh, Water from Noah's Ark completely wipes out humanity. Jonah is tossed overboard into a stormy sea where he is swallowed up by a big fish. The Apostle Paul is shipwrecked on the island of Malta after several stormy days on, on a ship in the sea. But at the end of Revelation, the sea is no more. This passage is telling us that in this new creation, in this new order, there's no room for separation. There's no room for turbulence. There's no room for restlessness. There's no room for death, destruction, and chaos. There's no sea in this new creation. But we are told of a river. There is a river that flows through this city in in this new Jerusalem. And rivers tell a different story for the Jewish people. Rivers aren't a symbol of chaos and turbulence and destruction They're not like the sea. In the Bible, a river represents something entirely different. They symbolize and represent life itself. In this passage in Revelation, the angel comes to John and and takes him to the river of the water of life. The river flows from the throne of God and the Lamb, runs through the middle of the city, and runs through the center of God's new creation. And so kind of in preparation for this sermon this week, um, Allie and I, on Monday night, we watched the movie A River Runs Through It, which is almost 30 years old. Um, Next year will be 30 years old. And it's based on a semi-autobiographical novel written by Norman MacLean. And the story talks about Norman and his relationship with his brother Paul, who's played by uh, Brad Pitt. And the two boys are the sons of John MacLean, who was a Presbyterian minister. He's the man in the middle there. He's very strict, um, but their favorite thing to do as a family, these three boys, the, the father and two sons, is to go fly fishing on the Black, uh, Blackfoot River in Montana. And in, in, in fact, in the first scene of this movie, it says this, in our family, there was no clear line between religion and fly fishing. <laughs> the two kind of went hand in hand for them. Um, but the father, John, Um, talks to the boys about life by talking about a river. Uh, He would turn over rocks, and he would talk about the world, about life, about God's creation. And and throughout the movie, we see this family encounter some ups and downs, some twists and turns, some sibling rivalry. and, And Paul, one of the brothers, starts to kind of get away from the family and starts to to kind of make his own path and, and stray, stray away a little bit. But fly fishing is a way for that family to continue to get together. Despite the challenges of life, they, they come together, and, and that fly fishing helps them navigate that, brings them closer. But the story takes um, an especially sad turn after the untimely death of Paul. And, and years, la- years later, the father John is preaching a sermon And he's clearly still dealing with the grief of this untimely death of his son Paul. And in the sermon he says, we can love completely without completely understanding. It's a a really beautiful movie. If if you've never seen it before, I really encourage you to do that. But, But throughout the movie we see time and time again that the river is a metaphor for life itself. 
the movie ends with the same words that are uttered toward the beginning of the movie. It ends the same way that the novel ends. It says, eventually, all things merge into one, and a river runs through it. The river was cut by the world's great flood and runs over rocks from the basement of time. On some of the rocks are timeless raindrops. Under the rocks are the words, and some of the words are theirs. I am haunted by the waters. You know, throughout these scriptures, we see the river of the water of life spring up time and time again. In the book of Genesis, at the very beginning of creation, we see a river running through the Garden of Eden. And a river flows through Eden, watering the garden. And it divides into four branches. It says that uh, the name of the first river is, is the Pishon. It flows around the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the land's gold is pure, and the land also has sweet-smelling resins and gemstones. The name of the second river is the Gihon. And it flows around the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris, flowing east of Assyria. And then the name of the fourth river is the Euphrates. We see these rivers running through God's creation from the very beginning. A river runs through it. The prophet Ezekiel also talks about a river flowing from the temple. And he says, wherever the river flows, every living thing that moves will thrive. Think about that. Wherever there is a river, every living thing will thrive. There will be great schools of fish because when the waters enter the sea, it will be fresh. Wherever the river flows, everything will live. Ezekiel reminds us that, that the river sustains us. It supports life. All of creation is dependent on the river. A river runs through it. Then the prophet Zechariah also talks about a river flowing out of Jerusalem. He says, On one day known to the Lord there will be neither day nor night, but in evening time there will be light. On that day, running water will flow out of Jerusalem, half of it into the Dead Sea and half of it to the Mediterranean. And Zechariah tells us that these waters are flowing out of the holy city of Jerusalem. A river runs through it. And then in John's Gospel, we see Jesus talking about the rivers of living water. And Jesus says, Whoever is thirsty should come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, just as the Scripture said, rivers of living water will flow out from within them. Jesus is talking about this river that flows within us, this life-giving water. It's kind of reminiscent of a conversation that Jesus has with the Samaritan woman at the well. We looked at this a few weeks ago. Jesus tells her, everyone who drinks the water from the well will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never be thirsty again because the water that I give them becomes in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. A river runs through it. And then here in the book of Revelation, we see again this river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, running right through the center of this city. But we're told that on, on each side of this river are the tree of life on both sides. And the tree produces 12 kinds of fruit, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. And I think it's interesting to know that the tree of life that we see here in the last book of the Bible is also one of the trees that we see in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. The same with the river. We see the river in Genesis. We see the river in Revelation. But I love how one theologian talks about how things have changed from Genesis to Revelation. He says, after Adam and Eve sinned by eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge, they were banished from Eden by the mercy of God in case they also ate of the tree of life and became immortal of their sin. But now that redemption has been accomplished, it is safe to eat of the tree of life in Revelation. Things have changed. There's this beautiful image that shows us that redemption and reconciliation are found in humanity. 
that the worst thing is never the last thing. The first thing at the beginning of creation is now redeemed, now made right. God has come and God has made all things new. And so as we think about our own lives as rivers of living water, I wonder how is it with your life? You know, what does your river look like? Is it shallow? Is it rocky? Is it stagnant? Has it dried up? Or is it vibrant and moving and rushing with life and excitement? But maybe maybe a better question. Does your river produce good fruit? Does your river produce good fruit? Some of you may uh, know Will Shelton. He served as the associate pastor before I came here. He wrote a book as well called The Roots of Eden. And he talks about some of the first chapters in Genesis. And one of the things that he says in his book is, is there's three qualities about fruit. One is um, it tastes good, right? The second is it's good for you. And the third is it's meant to be shared, it's meant to be shared. What, what kind of fruit are you producing? We think about the Apostle Paul who talked about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Are you producing those fruits in your life? Are you moving and working at making a difference in other people's lives? In other words, what are you doing with this river of life, this gift of life that God has given to you? What are you doing with your river? May we experience the river flowing through our lives. May we produce good fruit in the way that we reach out to others. May we experience cool and refreshing water flowing through us and reaching out to others. In the words of Norman McLean, eventually all things merge into one and a river runs through it. The river was cut by the world's great flood and runs over rocks from the basement of time. On some of the rocks are timeless raindrops. Under the rocks are the words. And some of the words are theirs. I am haunted by the waters. Let us pray. Loving God, we can only imagine the vision that John paints for us in Revelation. We see this small glimpse into eternity. We hear about the light that illumines the city. We learn about the elaborate jewels and gems and pearls that cover the walls. We listen to the promise of the river of living water that runs through the city. And we are thankful for the ways in which you are guiding us along life's journey. We pray that we might pay attention to the river and streams that we are living. May we bear good fruit and make a difference in people's lives. Help us to place our trust in your love. Open our hearts to see the wonder of your eternity. Release us from our anger, loneliness, and despair. Bring to us the realization that in your love we may find peace and joy. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. This morning we are sharing together in a time of Holy Communion time when we remember when Jesus was gathered with his disciples in the upper room and he broke bread and he gave bread to his disciples and he said take eat this is my body which is given for you and every time you eat this bread I want you to remember me and after that supper he took the cup gave thanks to God gave it to his disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and every time you drink that I want you to remember me And so every time we share in this service of communion, we are reminded, reminded of the things that Christ did, of of not only reminded of what he did, but what he is doing now. 
and how we are invited to, to participate and share in that together. I've said before, one of the things I like about taking communion this way is that we all get to do it at the exact same time. Which isn't that what communion is all about? Communing together, sharing together uh, with one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, may you bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ. Pour it out for you. Which in your name we pray. Amen. Now I want to invite you to peel back the uh, top layer, that clear layer that has the, the wafer. And be reminded that this is the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to peel back that second layer with the juice. And be reminded that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Would you stand with us as you're able? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking up above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. I want to thank you again for joining us in this time of worship. If you were visiting with us this morning, so glad that you were here. I invite you to come back and worship with us again next week. If you have any questions about what it might look like to join the church or be a part of Keith Church, love to talk with you more about that. We actually have a Keith 101 new member class or anybody interested who would like to learn more about the church. Um, every Sunday during the month of August from 10 to 1045 in the conference room, we'd love to have you come and be a part of that. At this time, I invite you to receive this benediction. Arise and go in peace. May God's love be with you and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.